Our passage, brother, in this gospel, Jesus is teaching us, as he taught before, about the Christian virtue of humility. Humility is a virtue most to be desired because it is the opposite of pride. Yeah, there is nothing wrong with taking joy in hard work, but simple pride happens when we become self-absorbed and we think that our action can somehow save us. Being humble doesn't mean that we stand or we beat ourselves up or constantly thinking negatively. No, no, no. God has given us some skills, some capability, some worthiness. It doesn't mean recognizing that we live. I mean, it means we recognize that we live for Christ. It is a lesson that reminds us to place others before them and to place God at the head of all things we see and we do in this world. Jesus warned people not to be hypocrites. What is a hypocrite? A hypocrite is someone who says one thing and does another. God wants us to be sincere. That means we, what we say, we mean it and do as we promise to do. So the Pharisees in the Bible times told people they needed to follow a lot of fancy rules, but they didn't follow the rules themselves. And this is where you hear, they tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on people's shoulders. But they themselves are not willing to move them with their fingers. Why were they action? Why were the, the actions of these people wrong? Why? We can ask that question. What were they doing? Well, what were they doing things for? The Pharisees wanted attention. We are not Forest Hill to, eh? we are not to attract attention. Let us do things for the glory of him. Brother and sister, pride has always been a cause of lots of distractions. Let us wait for God. Let us seek for God's approval, not the approval of anybody. Brother and sister, remember that you are also a saint. But as a saint, you have been put together to this family. You don't stand there and uh, you are happy people calling you Saint George or Saint George or those. No, no, no. That's not the thing that the Bible is teaching us. You have been joined to the family of all saints, including those who live around the world and those who have gone to be with the Lord. Therefore, all saints day, my dear brother and sister, is a perfect and wonderful time to remember that God has made you special for him and his purpose, and that he has joined you into the eternal worldwide fellowship of all his saints. And above all, it is a good day to take seriously 
the fact that God wants to make himself known in this world through you as a member of that family of all saints. So I want to leave you with a simple question. Just a small, simple question. When you hear the word sent, or oh holy, what comes to your mind? Go and think all the time as you cross this week, think of that word, holy or sent. What comes to your mind? And work it out to live as a saint. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Now we will listen to, to at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, which will be just played. Somebody is going to, uh, to, to help us to conduct as we, we hear those words being sung and read by somebody. intercession as we pray for the world and for ourselves and our families. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayers. Loving Father, God Almighty, in Jesus' name, we pray because you say pray without ceasing. 
we know that you already know our prayers. And there is no need, as stated by your word, the scriptures, there's no need of many words. Lord, we pray because you say pray without ceasing. That's why we come again this moment to ask you to hear our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. During this time of coronavirus, that has taken so many lives. We don't know how to explain this alone. But we believe that you understand this and you know. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Many brothers and sisters that belong to this family, to this church family, have lost their loved ones. Many in our circuit have lost their loved ones. Who can bring consolation? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We remember Isolin, Isolin's brother who passed away, and we remember Isolin's family. We remember the family of Kamen. And we remember our sister, Bonnie's family. Lord, before you, we want to remember our sister, Sandra, who, whose father passed away. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Before you, Heavenly Father, we can't forget to bring those who are in hospitals, those who are recovering, and among them, O oh Lord, we want to mention Andrew Ratley, who is now recovering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers, O Heavenly Father, as we pray for this world, as we pray for our country, as we pray for our government right now, which is to make difficult decisions because of this coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the schools that are going to open soon after this afternoon. Be with the students. Help them to be humble in front of their teachers. Lord, we pray for the teachers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers, O oh Heavenly Father. As we ask you to keep us amazed, to think that you have set us apart for you and for your mission. Thank you for choosing us, for choosing each and every one of us here. Help us, dear Lord, to live out who we are as saints in this church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So, brothers and sisters, let us finish our prayer as we say the Lord's Prayer together. We say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen? Amen. So this leads us to the end of our service. I'm going to invite whether there is any notices. Uh, yes, uh, the senior steward team is going to give us some notices. And then we will sing, we will listen to our final hymn. And that will be the end of the service. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I know it's not the best weather at the moment. Um, I'd like to thank John for playing, and Sylvie is going to play, and John Barber for all our technical needs. Um, I'd like to always thank you. I know you've noticed the beautiful flowers, and they are in memory of John Collis's mother, um, who passed away in March, October. So, um, they are from John. As I think you all know, we will be in lockdown from Thursday, and under the current um, regulations, we will not be able to meet on Sundays for the next four weeks, it would appear. Anything changes, we will say that, and you get obviously. So this will be our loss face-to-face for a few weeks, unfortunately. Um, we will definitely send out a newsletter. Uh, we may consider individual posts, we don't know, but we will send out a newsletter. Okay. And we will obviously reinstate our Sunday services on YouTube as well. The worship group will practice at the organ after the service with John, um, and I think it will be recorded, I believe, yeah, for, for remembrance. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, let us listen to this hymn, which is Show Me How to Stand for Justice. And then that will be the end of our service. say the words of grace with one another.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, evermore. Amen.